Man, mini PCs are great. I just hate that you really can't upgrade them to game. But what if I told you that one specifically can be upgraded with this, a graphics card and well, an SSD to actually be able to game for under $200. Don't believe us? We're gonna do it and show you guys how to do it along the way after what? a word from today's sponsor. What? 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 Listen, we know that you guys love deals as much as us. That's why you're watching this video, right? Well, today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, is one of our favorite websites for finding amazing deals. Jawa.gg is an online marketplace for selling PC hardware, peripherals, consoles, and even full PC builds. There's always some great finds in the PC build section due to the fact that there are expert builders listing systems for super solid prices. For example, this gaming PC with a Ryzen 5 5600, RX 6600, and 16 gigs of RAM is only $650. And for all my fellow tech enthusiasts, upgrades are always calling our name, especially when the price is right. Jawa is the go-to place for gamers to sell their old gear, so it's super common to find some pretty amazing deals on used hardware. You can find things like this RTX 4060 for $230, and you can shop with confidence knowing that Jawa has your back. Jawa's top priority is ensuring trust between buyers and sellers, and all listings are digitally moderated and come with a money-back guarantee. If you're interested in learning more or in shopping for some amazing deals yourself, head over to jawa.gg today. Big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. All right guys, so this mini PC is an elite desk from HP, the 705G4, and on paper, it doesn't look like it'd be anything gaming. It does come with a 2400GE, Ryzen 5 2400GE, which is a four core, eight threaded processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and as you can see right here, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Once you open it up this way, it looks like a very basic mini PC that you probably can't do much with, but enter this. This is a graphics card, specifically an RX 560X, which has four gigs of VRAM, and you can find these on Amazon and eBay for around 40 to $50, and they're actually designed to fit right here. But again, it's not that easy. You don't just sit it right there and you're good to go. It will take a little bit of modification. And if you are going to upgrade to this graphics card, you do need to get a bigger power adapter. This right here is an HP power adapter you can find on eBay. 150 watts is what you need. All in all, with the SSD that we're going to be using, this graphics card, this mini PC, we're in about $183 for this mini computer, which is pretty good for something with a dedicated graphics card. But is it going to be as good as some of these newer APU-based Ryzen 7000 series mini PCs? We'll have to benchmark it and see how it does in games, but we're going to show you guys how to set this up yourself. And I've already done it to demo it to make sure it actually works. <laughs> so I'm going to have Jackson do it and uh, see if he can actually figure it out. You know, this is going to be, be some to... intuition here, guys. Some intuition. It's, it's pretty simple. So you might be, well, this is not the bit you need, so we definitely need to fix that. Um, zero. You might be able to tell that this right here is where the CPU is. So obviously the graphics card has to go right here. Right, all right, so I got I got some basic ideas here. So I guess we're gonna need to take the cage out. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Okay. That is the one downside of this mod. You have to get rid of this tray, which eliminates the ability to use a two and a half inch SSD, but underneath there, you will see something even better, an NVMe slot. <gasps> we love NVMe slots. So that just comes right out like so. Okay, so I guess would this be a good time to go ahead and put our NVMe in? Yes, it probably this is the only time to put the NVMe in. We have a 512 gig NVMe SSD, it's Mushkin Tempest Drive, uh, which will be plenty for this build. Uh, you can obviously go with more storage if you want to, but this will work perfectly fine in this little slot right here for our NVMe drive. All right, I got, I got the little screw out. That's a PH1. So I'll go ahead and Pop slide this bad boy in. Okay. Boop. I mean, you want faster Pretty storage so anyways. Like, who wants two and a half inch like hard drives or SSDs anyway? Okay, so I can see that this is going to go in there. And then we're going to need to power this fan, I assume. And then we're also going to have to DIC. We'll have to take something out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because this is going to go here. But then there's something in the way. This right here is the, uh, well, HD. Onboard? Yeah, the onboard display port, uh, which is for the onboard graphics. So all I got to do is remove those three screws right there. And then that piece should just pop right out. Um, oh, wait, there is three for you at home. I didn't put the third one back. <laughs> <laughs> so just know there would be three. And then that just lifts right up. It can be kind of difficult if it's the first time it coming out of that spot. So just uh, pry it a little bit. Now I will say when you do push it down, it does make a click. <laughs> is this supposed to be a crunchy click? I think that was the click. We'll be able to test it because the first time I did this, I didn't fully click it down. I just thought the pressure of the screws was what's supposed to actually put it in there, but it does click into place. Mm. So we'll screw this in, make sure it works. But in theory, once this is screwed in, you have a GPU in your mini PC. So in the front of this HP Elite Desk, we have a USB Type-C, two USB 3s, one is a fast charging port. We have two headphone jacks. One's a combo headphone jack and the other one is just a regular headphone jack. We have a power button. And then on the back side of the HP, we have two display port. We have one USB 2, one USB 3. We have, of course, our display port, which is after we added in the graphics card. We have one more USB 2, one more USB 3, and then an 
ethernet jack and then our power barrel jack. But yeah, now that we have the GPU installed, obviously we just had to screw these two screws back in. There is that open screw spot, but I will say there wasn't a screw that came with the mini PC already or the graphics card to screw that in, but it seems pretty secure once you push that in, you hear the firm click, then you just slide that on and boom, you now have a GPU with a Ryzen 2000 series CPU, the 2400 GE, which is pretty good for under $200. It's better than just your traditional office PC. It's pretty crazy. It's still the same size too. So I'm curious to see what type of temps we get, of course, and then obviously, I don't think I've ever used a five, was it 550X? 560X. 560X, yes. like, I, don't even, I haven't even heard of that. So I'm kind of excited to see what this thing will do in gaming. So yeah, let's go ahead and plug it up and do some benchmarking. All right, gamers, we're playing Apex Legends and we're currently at 1080p. Uh, we got oh. pretty pretty low settings going here, max FOV. We got Shaquille Oatmeal. <laughs> Shaquille Oatmeal. Oh, dude, this is gonna be hype. Playing a little, little gun run. Yeah, I mean, so far, you know, the first thing I'm already noticing, got some fairly high temps on that GPU. Yep. It ain't the happiest in the world, but this game looks like it has Vaseline on it, doesn't it? It, it looks Vaseline. It's definitely doing some uh, downscaling to try to get 60 FPS. <laughs> yeah, definitely, um, I mean, barely like a, it's not, not even like a 60 FPS experience. It's getting close, but. Yeah, definitely chunky. Um, this combo is not amazing. And as you can see, it runs a bit hot, but I mean, if you get it cheap enough, it can be a cool little emulation system. I really think in this situation, this is like worst case scenario. We'll try Fortnite too, the CPU can do, but um, it's not looking like an amazing gaming system. Uh, adding a GPU, in theory, you would feel like you get way more performance, but in reality, you probably can get a new 7000 series Ryzen mini PC that's better than this. What? Oh, oh he, got, he got the, oh. So bad. Yay! Yes. Let's go. Homie, let me run the middle of the map. Uh, Are you oh my kidding? god! <laughs> oh my no god, shot. he's a recoil. The recoil. No shot, no he's shot. Insane. I hate this gun, dude. I literally yeah. hate it. You killed Shoddy. I literally hate it. You're done. Oh, 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 we're cooking now. Oh god, they have the knives. Oh my god, I'm being shot by 25 people. That <laughs> he was, used oh, a knife, is, not is a this gun. me dying? Me being shot by 10 teams, man. That was Apex Legends. Uh, not enjoyable, if I'm being honest. Latency was pretty horrible. FPS wasn't great. It's hard to even tell what I was looking at. Let's go to the next game. Next game. All right, guys, we're trying to play Fortnite on performance settings, far view distance, low textures. We'll go ahead and drop in. It, it ain't running great, I'll be honest with you. That's kind of the theme of this, you know, it's a it's a concept that you can do and you guys recommend that we try, but I'll be honest, at $183, unless you're mainly using this as an office PC with some GPU accelerated tasks that aren't gaming, it's really not worth it versus if you're trying to go like, let's say the maximum game performance route, just upgrading like an old office PC with a budget GPU would be a far better solution. And we are running again, performance settings and I have, oh goodness, removed all the high res textures and pre-launch options. So we're at maximum performance options right now. This might be a situation where I would definitely want to cap the FPS to 60. I think it just can't handle these higher frame rates, most likely, but we'll see. We'll see if it actually loads in stuff and uh, gets a little better. No, Woo. you're done. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh God. I don't, I don't know what just happened. Is that a good guy? Oh, I'm locked up again. Oh, I'm just being bullied. <laughs> yeah! Oh, I think those guys yeah, are still going. We got a tire. Oh, off-road tires, though. Let's go! Woo! We're going to lock this ish. I still, I would never recommend this for someone to be their primary <laughs> gaming system. Okay, bail. Oh, the freeze-up. The freeze-up, the absolute lock-up. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's not great. I will run some other benchmarks, though. We'll run Cyberpunk, we'll run 3D Mark, we'll run another AAA title. I have a feeling this is kind of like a emulation office computer more than anything. That's about the best recommendation I can have for it. It's not gonna be great for your esports titles unless you're playing Minecraft or Roblox. But hey, it's 180 bucks. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to see that this exists in the market. Let's run those other benchmarks and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done testing this mini PC after we upgraded it, and uh, overall, it wasn't great. I mean, the price is still pretty good. If you look at how much we spend on new mini PCs, we'll get up to four or 500 bucks before we get, I would say, close to this level of performance, but the fact that it runs so hot that you can't touch it, and the fact that it's supposed to have a good APU and GPU, but we're not getting that level of performance doesn't quite add up. 
In reality, I really just don't know why the 560 exists for this mini PC. I think it's cool, but in reality, it doesn't make a huge difference versus the integrated graphics. But we did test some other games to really prove that theory. And in 3D Mark, we only got a score of 1,533, which for the price we paid, is still a 12 cent per point score. Not great price performance in terms of gaming performance. Cyberpunk 1080p low using FSR, we managed to creak out 29 FPS. Not great. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales 1080p, very low settings with FSR, we only got 30. FPS. So this ain't really designed for gaming. The fact that we added a GPU though would make you think it's designed for gaming, but really it's only going to be good for emulation and light stuff like Minecraft and Roblox. But again, we have to come back to the fact that this is $180. And for that price, something that's portable, while be it very hot and portable, it's still cool that you can build these and have a specific use case for them. And if you have that use case in mind, let us know in the comments down below and also use our fillings in the description to shop for one of these mini PCs. And let me know, would you pick one of these up for your next build? So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. You know what does add up? PCBros.tech. PCBros.tech. It's like one plus one equals three. <laughs> Use code Toasty Bros on checkout to save 3% of your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.